Welcome back to the Wizard Shop. Today we're going to talk about timing chains and they can make or break an engine. When is it time to change them? Let's get started. Ever since the advent of cars, there's always been some way to drive the timing components, the camshaft and things. There's about three different ways. Actually, there's four, but I'll talk about three. There's gear driven, kind of like a Cummins. They have gears touching gears and that runs the injection pump and things. Then there's timing chains, which most vehicles for the longest time had timing chains, albeit they were very small, just like in this truck or timing belts, which were a lot of the late 80s, 90s, 2000s, when they still do timing belts today, although they're starting to go away from belts and everything's going to chains. There is a fourth one on motorcycles, like the older Ducatis had a bevel drive. It was still gears, but it was bevels. But that's really not relevant to what we're looking at today. We'll take a look inside this truck. There's a few updates on it, but we'll also show where the timing chain is at and talk about it. Let's take a look. So the timing chain on this vehicle is actually not too hard to get to if it were to have issues. It's actually right down through here. I'll actually touch it with my flashlight. There's a little pan right there. You can see the little bolts. Right there, there's some bolts. You can hear the pan right there. It's behind the water pump. And it's just a chain from the crank to the cam. It doesn't run anything else. There's really no guides or anything or tensioners. It just sits there and runs the cam. These style timing chains really never gave any trouble. I mean, there were some years in Cadillacs and things that had plastic nylon teeth in the gears and they would cause trouble. But for the most part, these style timing chains really caused no trouble. When these cars were new, 60s, 70s, 80s, the idea of timing chains being cheap and grenading your motor, like the GM 3.6 pile of crap, or different things like that, there was unheard of. Nobody thought about the timing chain letting go and just grenading your engine. That's something that's recent. That's something in the 2000s, definitely. We'll show some updates here. You can see it has a power steering pump bolted in the proper bracket. We got the lines ran. We got belts on it. There's the new gearbox bolted in. It's a power steering gearbox. Everything's hooked up. We're almost done. We're getting ready to put fluid in it and try it out. So everything bolted up just like I said it would. It was basically just buy the parts for a power steering truck and mention nothing about conversions. We're not converting. I just took the manual stuff off and bolted on the power steering stuff and it bolted right up. I think it's going to work very well. Here's the manual steering gearbox. It's a little lightweight little guy. And like we mentioned in the video on this truck, it came with power steering. The RPO codes in the glove box mention it. I don't know the story. I don't know why it had manual steering, but now it will have power steering. So let's move over to the Jeep and talk more about timing chains. So an update on the Jeep. The engine is back from my rebuilder, Martin Machine in Wichita. Everything looks so much better inside. We have an old stock cam that is the specifications that the customer wanted from their previous cam. We've got old stock lifters with the hardened bottoms. And we reused the pistons and rebuilt it and went through everything and fixed everything up that had been damaged and it is so much better now. We've primed the oil system with some high zinc oil and we're getting ready to actually slide the engine into it. I can't wait to get this thing running and get it out of my shop so the customer can have it back. Uh, hopefully it's soon. So here's the timing cover, the old one off of this engine. You can see inside of here, the oil pump was scored up pretty bad and Danielson's doing the work and he didn't like that. And I said, I agree, we're not gonna use it. This was from debris that had gotten in the engine. I'm glad we rebuilt it again and to get it right, this time right correctly. But you can see on the yellow truck, we just had to remove the water pump and we could take the cover off the timing chain. But that's even harder to do on this engine. It's got the oil pump that's part of it. We got the water pump. Right here mounts the fuel pump. And this is an entire housing. Let me show you it on the engine. 
So you can see the housing's all bolted up and there's tons of accessories. The AC compressor, there's belts and pulleys, the power steering bracket, the alternator, the water pump. To get to the timing chain on this engine would be a major front end teardown of this engine. It wouldn't be fast like that Chevy 350 was. A lot more complicated. Even though it's really complicated to get to the timing chain on this engine, we're still in the era where it's unheard of of the idea. My timing chain snapped and my engine is in a thousand pieces internally. Most of these old engines are non-interference, so even if the timing chain were to break, which rarely ever happened, the pistons will not hit the valves. But in today's era, we have engines where the compression is very tight, the timing is very, very precise. And there are points where valves can hit pistons. And when the timing chain does go, it's catastrophic. And you would think if everything's so precise and so delicate, we probably should put strong timing chains and strong timing components to make sure it doesn't break. That's exactly the opposite of what manufacturers did. Let's go take a look at a vehicle you're not going to be surprised about it. Let's take a look. Ta-da! It's timing chain time on an A5 2012 Beetle. Imagine that. No, the timing chain did not break. My engine is not grenaded. But in the last video, when I showed this car, or actually introduced it, several people commented, hey, car wizard, you really should check your timing chain on these because they are known to fail. They stretch. I don't know if it was a recall or if it's a TSB or something that was out, but it was a huge problem. And I remember, I started to think about it, I was like, I remember that. Back in 2012 and 13, there was major timing chain issues with these 2.0 TSI engines. I had been noticing in the morning it was a little rough idle. Other than that, it ran perfectly. But I got my scan tool, my Autel MS908, and hooked to it. And hooked it up to the car and looked at the data and I looked at phase adaptation for the intake camshaft. Really you want to see minus one, minus two, somewhere around in that range, maybe even zero. If it gets to minus 4.5, you are at the limits. You really, it's time for a timing chain. Mine was at minus 5.3. I don't know how much longer it would have lasted but I decided I'm not going to chance it. I love this car. It runs so good. It's quick. It's snappy. I've got some different plans I'm going to do with this car. And the last thing I need right now is to destroy the engine. So it is a part. Magic Mike's doing a timing chain service on it. And when we pull it apart, let me show you some of the things I found. Now we can see it's not so easy to get to timing chains. And there's a lot of pieces and parts that have to work together. I mentioned that with such a complex engine, you would think they would beef up the timing components. They don't. They're made out of chintzy plastic. This is a guide that guides the chain. These things get old, especially if you don't do regular oil changes. They get brittle and they can snap or start wearing and breaking down. It is not a good thing. Here's our timing chain, the main chain that runs the cams. I don't have the new one here yet, but if I were to able to lay it up against this one and compare, I guarantee this one stretched quite a bit more. This is a junky chain. It is no good. This is the tensioner. Here's the cover that goes over it. It looks kind of like that when the engine's assembled. When you take this little plug off, you can see the tensioner. And I took the inspection cover off just to double, triple verify that truly my timing chain is stretched to the max. Typically you'd like to see a couple of these lines sticking out about that far, maybe that far. Mine was like this. I don't even know how it was working. It was barely, barely holding on. So kudos to you guys in the comment section for reminding me to say, hey, you better check that out. And I did, and I'm glad I did. Now, is this a strike against EuroAsian Bob? No, because EuroAsian Bob did not design this engine. He did not build this car. He just bought and sold it.
This problem applies to tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, of these engines, no matter who sold the car. So, this is not a problem that I have with Eurovision Bob. I have no trouble with this at all. I kind of thought this might have to be done, and after hearing you guys' comments and doing some research, it is definitely past time to do it, and I'm glad we're doing it. Also, let's take a look at the front of the engine. It's kind of all apart right now. It's kind of neat to look at. This has to be done through the wheel well. You have to take the wheel off and the wheel liner. There's a balance shaft, which is the, the medium-sized chain right here that runs the balance shafts. We're keeping that timed up until the parts show up, the new timing chain kit. Here's our oil pump timing chain, which will also come in the kit. We're replacing all of these guides, tensioners. There's a few tensioners, the main one being the main chain. Here we have the top end. You can see the cam gears. This is definitely not a job for a novice. There's multiple things that have to be timed up here, not just the cams to the crank, but also the balance shafts have to be timed or there'll be some crazy vibrations. Okay, wizard, so are VWs the only ones with problems with plastic pieces around their timing chains? Nope, if you guys remember, on Hoovy's garage, we buried a Range Rover, a white one. That was mine. Those are the BMW 4.4, I think they are, and they had timing chain issues where the guides would come apart and literally disintegrate into pieces. And also they'd start clacking on the, I guess you call them cam phasers or cam adjusters. There are multiple, multiple makes and models of cars out there that have this problem. This is not a VW problem. Like I said, you would think car manufacturers would beef up the timing systems so they would last. But they only design them to last to about 100, 150,000 miles. And then they're like, you should be buying a new car. You should not be replacing the timing chains in your car. Forget about your old car. Come to us and buy a new car. That's basically the mentality. Obviously, we're not going to do that. I'm going to fix my Beetle. I'm not going to go buy a brand new one for $47,000. Okay, Wizard, so then how do I know if I'm looking at a new car? How do I know if it's going to be a good one or not? You can go to Google and type in 2012 Beetle timing chain and see what kind of things you find. Type in, obviously, the vehicle you're looking at. But if you currently own a car, listen in the morning. That's really when these things act up is when you first start it. If it's like a clacking noise or something really loud, you might be looking at a timing chain problem. At least take it to a shop and get it checked out. Also, some cars will have a check engine light, like the GM 3.6. You'll get a code for cam crank correlation. It's saying that the timing is so far off, something's wrong. It's because the timing chain is stretched. So you definitely want to keep an eye out for that. So. There's several things, like I said, I want to do to this. We'll reveal that at a later date. But right now, we're going to just do the timing chains and get this thing serviced so I can continue enjoying the fun little beetle. Blastoise is his name, actually. Now, I have one last update on the Lincoln. There's some parts that came in, and we're going to be happy to also get that one done as well. So here we are, the 1961 Lincoln Continental. It's been in the shop for a while, waiting on parts. It's actually almost done. There wasn't so many things that we had to do, like the Blue Lincoln, that we were able to find most of the parts. But we got to the point where we were almost done with the car and it started leaking coolant. It's just another one of those reasons why I had to stop working on these because that wasn't even on the list. That wasn't something we're supposed to look at. I'm thinking, okay, we're done with this car. Go road test it, make sure it's good, and then we can call the customer. Take it out, coolant on the road. What? So the heater cores have these little valves that mount this little hole here and these two screw holes. It just mounts on top of the heater core with this gasket. And this vacuum pot here will open and close the valve and let coolant flow or not. I thought, okay, okay, I got, I got to get these rebuilt or replaced. And I searched and searched and, and there was no hope. It was like, there are none. There's no more. This was a one-year-only setup. I contacted Lincoln Land at the request of this customer. He said, I think that they can probably help you get this fixed. And they said, oh yeah, we can, uh, we can rebuild those. So I sent them the old ones. Then I got a call from them like two or three days later. They said, oh, it's those heater valves. Okay, those were only 
1961. In 62 they changed to a completely different setup and in 60 it was even completely different than this. They said we don't have these, we can't rebuild them. There is one guy left in the whole country that still rebuilds these. We will send it to him and he will rebuild them, which he has. These have been rebuilt. They're ready to go back into the vehicle. We have them here in the box. One guy left doing these. What happens when he's gone? I guess people will have to learn or do without or figure out how to adapt or something. I don't know. But we'll get these installed on the heater cores, get the coolant leak fixed, and then we can finally do some final road tests and get this one out of the shop as well. And just as the other vehicles that we looked at, this too has a timing chain. It's similar to the, the Jeep in that it would be kind of a teardown to get to the timing chain. It's basically in the front underneath the water pump. But again, that wasn't a concern back in 1961 on whether or not your timing chain is going to snap. It just didn't happen. It really didn't. Uh, I don't even, I mean, if you were to travel back in time to 1961 and say, can I get a timing chain service? The mechanics would be like, why? Those things last the life of the car. And they pretty much did. They don't anymore for some reason. It's just really, really cheap parts. They, they get the, I think that they get the parts designed in a good manner. And then for cost reasons, the management says, can we make this a little lighter or a little cheaper? If we can save $37 on this car times 400,000 cars, who cares if it doesn't last as long? That's really what they're thinking. It's really sad, but all we can do is fix it and move on. And for those of you who have timing belts, you will be doing a service on those. They are not designed nor they have ever been designed to last the life of the car. Usually it's 60 to 90, 100,000 miles, somewhere around that range, depending on the vehicle. You'll have to look at your owner's manual. It'll state in there when it's time for a new timing belt. You don't want to skip that. You don't want to chance it. Say, well, I'll cross my fingers and I'll get through to the, to the end of the year. You may not. Do you want to spend 1,500 bucks to get your timing belt done, or grand, whatever it ends up being? Or do you want to buy a new engine? That's the question you need to ask yourself. It's just like oil changes. It's scheduled maintenance. You're supposed to do it, even though a lot of people don't anymore, sadly. You have to change your oil. You don't notice a difference. You don't get anything out of it other than prolonging the length of the life of your engine. You don't get more power. You don't get more fuel economy. It's just a, a required service that has to be done. Whenever I get a timing belt in for service, no one is ever happy about that. They just say, well, it's time. Just do it and get it over with. It's not fun, but it has to be done. If you're curious what kind of tools that Magic Mike used to tear this thing down, and also that he's going to use to put it back together, or tools that we use all over in the shop, check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We get a small cut, and we really appreciate it. Make sure to hit the subscribe button because there's more, way more videos to come. Thanks for watching.